What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today I'm going to show you guys the best wall anchor or wall plug to use on drywall sheets, also known as plasterboard sheets. Let's do this. Alright guys, so I've got here my little off-cut piece of Jiprock, uh, plasterboard, drywall sheet, whatever it is that you want to call it. It's the same all around the world, it's the internal sheeting for your walls. Um, I've got my little clamp here attached to a ladder which is unreal. I'm finding new places to attach this thing to every day. So I've got this attached here. I'm going to use this to show you guys my favorite uh, wall plug or wall anchor because it simply does the job so easy. And I've got a whole range of different ones here that I keep for different applications. but. I'd say probably 99% of the time I wouldn't even bother with any of the other ones. What I'd go for is this one right here. Now in Australia this one is called a Wallmate. Around the world I'm not sure if they call it Wallmate, I don't know who created it, but this one is a Ramset brand. Um, these are unreal, so this is the easiest way, the strongest way, the cleanest way, and to top it off they're actually reusable. So I'm going to show you guys just why it is that I like this one here um, over the other ones, and I've got two other uh, very common ones that you'd find. So we've got the hollow wall anchor and we've also got the uh, spring toggle. So I'm going to show you guys why I don't like these two. Um, and they're not my first preference at, by any means. Always go for this one here. That's why I've got a whole stack of them right here. And they also come in steel, which I'll get into um, a bit more detail later on. So let's get straight into it and I'll show you guys how to install them and why it works so well. All right, so the main ones that I'm going to show you guys are the three that I spoke about before, plus these ones here. Now these ones here are just little plastic pieces that get plugged into your drywall. The reason why I'm including these ones here, there's a three different uh, types, is because usually when you buy you know, bathroom fittings or any kind of uh, wall frames or things like that that you're going to buy already with these wall plugs in there, um, they usually come with these ones here now they, they do work um, but there are flaws to them and I'm going to show you guys um, how to install these ones as well just in case um, then we'll run off onto the other ones so I'm going to start off with these plastic ones show you how to install them and then we'll run into the other ones alright guys so I'm going to start off with these three here which are the basic standard ones that you'd usually find um, when you buy anything that needs to be attached to the wall so these ones here are the standard ones plastic pieces they usually get screwed into the wall um, now the way these are usually installed, people tell you to drill a pilot hole and things like that. I'm going to show you guys an easy way to do it, and that's by using a screwdriver. So this only works obviously if you've got a drywall um, sheeting or plasterboard, jib rock, once again, whatever it is. So what you want to do is get a screwdriver um, that has the shaft around the same thickness as the actual plug itself. So as you can see, this one here is the same thickness as the plug. What I like to do, rather than sit and get in the drill um, and get a pilot hole ready, what I'll do is I just get the screwdriver and then just work that through right like that and now you can see I've got a hole here now these will go straight through so I'm going to get three of these set up and I'm going to show you guys how I install these three rather than doing a pilot hole this is a nice easy way to do it so all three of them basically go in the exact same way they'll have different things that they'll do so this one here it's got a split in it um, hopefully you guys can see it's got a split right there so as the screw gets pushed into that that'll split um, in the drywall sheet and it'll force it to itself to expand on the outside it's causing a wedge this one here has got little ridges on the side okay hopefully that focuses so it's got little ridges on the side which um, secure itself into the drywall sheet at the same time as you put in the screw it'll also cause that to expand and wedge on the side the third one which looks like that okay so you can see it's got some wings on the side what will happen is once I push that through the wall, we'll put the screw through and that'll cause the wing to also expand and it'll pull back onto the wall. So I'm going to show you guys the back of this once it's installed. So like I said, you just want to push those through. If they're still a bit tight, you can give them a hit with a hammer. So I'll start with the first one. So that's one in, nice and flush. This one is a bit bigger, so I might need to make a bit bigger hole for it. We'll see if we can get that through. That one fit in, and then we've got our yellow one on the bottom. So I'll just get that started. This one here might actually be the tight one. Once again, now we've got all three ready to go, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So once all three are in, you can see this one here has a lip on the outside, lip on the outside, which is a good thing, it actually prevents it from falling in, this one here doesn't have a lip. So what will tend to happen is if you use a screw that's too big for this one here, you run the risk of actually pushing the plug back through the wall and then you lose your plug and have to start all over again. So that's problem number one with this one here. 
These ones here are pretty good. I mean, it's got a little lip on it, so it locks itself into place. And now we'll put some screws in that, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. From the back of the wall, you can see there, nothing's happened yet. No expansion, obviously, because there's no screw. That's what the back of it looks like at the moment. So I'll put a screw through that, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So what I'm gonna use is 25 mil, uh, six gauge screws, which are very standard small screws, um, perfect for any kind of wall plugs. So I'll get straight into this one. I'm gonna put the camera on the back so you guys can see what happens to the wall plug as we screw this in. All right, so we'll start off on this top one here. So as the screw starts to work its way through, you can see there it starts to stiffen up and that's actually right the way through now. So it's caused a little bit of an expansion, which makes that lodge itself in. So it's not as loose and flimsy as this one here is. So now we've got that screw running through it. So we'll go through the other two as well. Top one over here. Oh, there you go, perfect example. I didn't even put much pressure on that whatsoever. And that's pulled right through. So if it wasn't for that screw on the other side now, so you can see there the screw. If it wasn't for that screw, this wall plug would have just lost its way right through. Um, there are ways uh, of avoiding this, however, like I, like I just showed you guys, there was absolutely no pressure on that, very, very light, um, and it's useless. So I'd never keep these around. The only reason why I've got them is for the purpose of this video, and they're pretty crap, to be honest. So once again, last screw now, bottom wall plug, which is the one that's got the wings and it's supposed to expand, so I'll see if I can get a bit closer. So you can see as I'm turning it, it's starting to turn around, it's supposed to expand. There we go, and it's starting to expand out. That'll wedge onto the jib rock sheet. And that's now pulled its way hard up against it. It's nice and solid, but we'll have a look what's happened on the other side. So as we see on the other side, you can see there where it's caused it to swell up. Okay, as it's trying to fight its way through and also preventing it from coming through on the other side. So we've caused a little bulge, which isn't the end of the world, but I mean, if you wanted to have something nice and flush up against the wall, if you've got this difference um, in bulge on this one and the other one that you're gonna hang something up on, might cause a bit of problem. Either way, it's caused a bit of mess that we don't need. So now I'll get into the other three main types of wall plugs and we'll see what they, uh, the outcome of those ones are. All right guys, so now I've got the spring toggle ready to go. Now the pain with these ones here is that they can't be used for all applications. And what I mean by that is, whatever it is that you're gonna to mount to the wall has to actually slide through the screw um, and then onto the toggle before you actually um, bolt that on. Now the reason for that is because the hole for the toggle is gonna to be obviously bigger than the head of the screw. So that means that you won't be able to get anything on there without the screw going through behind the wall. So. Like I said, we have to put the little hook on or whatever it is that you're gonna mount on there. Screw that through, give it a couple turns. Okay, now it's ready to go. So, drill the hole. It's gonna be actually a larger hole. Okay, so as you can see, it's a fairly large hole just for a wall mount. Um, so what we're doing, you wanna pull those toggle back, slide it through the wall. Still a little bit tight. So I'll show you guys from the back view what actually happens as I put that through. So as I'm still pushing this one here through, you can see it's starting to work its way in. As that comes through, that'll expand, and now it's got something to bite onto the back of the wall. So as I pull that, you can see it'll expand, and then all you do is simply tighten that up. Now I'm gonna do it by hand for now, but you use a screwdriver or a uh, drill, you can tighten that up by hand making sure to keep pulling it up against the wall as you're tightening it. Until it starts to get a bit tight, then we actually can switch over to the screwdriver. And once that's done, you can put that on nice and tight. Now, like I said, problems with it, size of the hole, it's nice and sturdy. However, when you do come time to remove it, um, it'll leave a large hole in there and also you have to put on the bracket or whatever it is. So that's gonna restrict you in terms of what you can actually mount to the wall. Now we'll move on to the next one, which is a hollow wall anchor. So what we've got here is the hollow wall anchor. Okay, so basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna drill a hole once again. Now this one here is a fairly thin hole uh, compared to this one right here. So we're gonna drill the hole for it. 
pass it right through and then just simply start screwing the screw on the end of this. Now what will happen is it's going to start to contract um, the metal springs here. Um, well they're not really springs, um, you'll see what I mean. So it's going to make these contract, it's going to wedge its way up against the wall and then we're going to have basically a similar thing to the toggle um, and it's going to tighten up nicely. Now what I don't like about this is you can see there it's got little spikes on the end of it. What that does is that'll actually plant into the wall and then when it comes time to remove it, depending on what kind of wall you have, um, it's going to be a nightmare to remove and you're probably going to do a fair bit of damage. So I'm going to put this one in, show you guys what that one's like. So drill your hole and we just want to pass that straight through. So once we've got that ready to go, we can hit it with the hammer. And now that I've put that in, those spikes have actually wedged into the plasterboard itself. That'll prevent it from moving around. You can use a, a screwdriver or a drill, whichever one you like. All right guys, so once that's through, I'm gonna use the drill now and start to tighten that up and you'll see what will happen on the back here. As you can see, it's starting to expand and that'll start to bite onto the actual wall itself. Once that's on, that'll plant completely on there. All right guys, so all of these ones here have been installed. Now it's time for the wall, mate. Show you guys just how easy it is to install these ones here. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna show you guys how to remove it and then what happens when it actually comes time to remove these wall plugs. All right guys, so with the wall, mate, you'll notice it's got a sharp point on the tip, very, very sharp. So what that does, it's plastic. What it'll do is that'll actually embed into the plasterboard and allow it to self-pilot hole or self-drill into the actual plasterboard itself. On the other end, it's got a Phillips head um, section, which means you can use both a uh, screwdriver and a drill. So it's actually really easy if you don't even have power tools. So I'll show you guys how easy it is to install. So I just put the, um, the wall mate on the end of the drill and then I'm just gonna pick any location and just start driving that in. As you can see, it's drilling its own pilot hole. Hopefully you guys can see. And that is it. That's how fast it is. Um, it's got a nice lip on the end of it, which I'll show you guys. So on the end of it here, it's got a nice wide lip, so that means it's gonna sit nice and flush. It's gonna sit perfect every time. Um, with these ones, these ones here are rated at 10 kilos, so that holds a lot of weight. That's about 11 pounds or so. Um, if you want, you can even go the next step up, which is this one here. This one's a little bit dirty, as you can tell, I've reused it. Um, this one here weighs, um, carries the amount of weight of 20 kilos, so 22 pounds. Um, and what's awesome about this one here is, once you drive the screw through it, it'll actually split, um, causing it to carry that extra weight. I'll show you guys on the back. It doesn't have anything fancy in terms of the other ones, um, considering the other ones had, you know, really nice, fancy ideas on the back of it. It's very, very basic. The spirals on there just simply catch through and bite on. It's that simple. And this one here is nice and sturdy, just like the rest of them. Um, and that's a really easy one. So with these ones here, what I like about them is they usually come with um, screws um, with the actual wall plug itself. However, you can put in any kind of screws that you like, so long as it fits. So I'll show you guys what I mean. I've got here some 25 mil six gauge screw and I've got a 30 mil eight gauge screw, which eight gauge is uh, thicker in case you don't know. I've also got a 40 mil and they all fit in there perfect. So the way to test if it fits, just simply run it through by hand. If that goes through, then you know it's gonna fit. So I'll show you guys with this one here. You can bite that one straight through. And now that's ready. We can either drill it in, we can hang something on there. Really easy to use. I'll use the bigger one in case I've got a picture frame that needs to come a bit off the wall. Once again, perfect. So like I said, even with a screwdriver, you can do the same thing. Just apply a bit of pressure on there so that you can start that hole. So you can see that it self drills itself because um, it's got a really sharp point. So just get that in and then we can just turn that by a screwdriver. So turn it all the way and that sits perfectly flush. And the upside is most people have white walls, so you'll find that even if you removed it, um, a screw or a picture frame, and you didn't want to patch the hole, you can simply leave that plug in there. They're not very noticeable like the brass. Now these plastic wall anchors also come in steel. Now the benefits of the steel ones, or the purpose of the steel ones, are used for any of the hard surfaces that you have to get through. So anytime you need to go through a hard surface, such as your compressed fiber cement sheets that you might find on the exterior of your house, in your kitchen, or in your bathroom, this is where you'd use one of these. Now these are able to get through without um, breaking or ruining the head of your actual wall plug. So you'd use a steel one instead. You're able to even get through soft timber with these. Um, so these ones here are perfect. 
They're used in the exact same way as the plastic ones, even the screw still goes in the screw head, exactly the same process, however it's constructed in steel. So now when it comes time to remove all these wall plugs, I'll show you what kind of problems you run into. So we remove all the screws out of there first. This one is going to drop, so I'm just going to leave it here for now. With the toggle, what you'll find is only the screw is going to come out, the toggle is actually going to drop behind the wall. So you only get a half of yours back and you won't actually be able to reuse that. With this one here, same thing, we'll be able to get the screw out. Once the screw's out, you'll be left with this sitting in the wall and then you have to try and pry that out. Now remembering on the back of this, we've got the, um, the, the little compressed metal bits on the end. So what's gonna happen with that is if you try and pull that out with the screwdriver, um, you're actually gonna pull through the whole wall. So unfortunately, I still haven't found a way to actually remove these safely without damaging the wall. What I tend to do is if I have these ones, I'll simply get a flat head screwdriver or a Phillips head, um, whatever I have available at the time. And I'll just simply push the hole in all the way and I'll work that around. I know it's messy, it's gonna damage the wall, but that's the only way to get rid of these things. So what I do is I don't even tend to pull it out, I'll just pop it straight back behind the wall like that, and then I'll end up just patching that hole because that's a nightmare to pull out. I'm not even gonna bother wasting my time with it. We've got this one here that was actually half holding on. So if I try and unscrew this one here, I probably won't even come undone because it's loose on the back and it's also gone through. So we don't have access to the back of the wall. So what I'll do with that one, you'd have to push that one right through and then you have to start all over again. These ones here, like I said, flathead screwdriver and you'd have to sit there and try and pry it out. But I don't bother taking any of these out. What I do once again, push them straight back through the wall. Then you've just got a small hole to patch. That one came out, but definitely can't reuse that. And with these ones up here, you simply reverse the plug back out. And what you'll find is the plug is basically in near new condition. If I clean this up, you probably won't even notice that it's been through the wall and these are ready to be reused. Now, I know there's still a hole here, but um, in terms of patching, it's very, very easy to patch these holes up. And like I said before, if you wanted to, you could really just technically leave it in the wall if you have a white wall and they're not very noticeable at all. Or you could even paint over the top of it um, but I like to just actually remove them and I'll reuse them later on. So there you have it guys, after running through a whole stack of wall plugs or wall anchors, whatever it is that you want to call it, the wall mate is by far the best choice. It's easy, it's simple, it's straightforward, they're reusable, they uh, self-drill so they'll self-pilot and hold themselves. Um, it's very, very easy to do. You don't get any of these problems like we did on the other ones of uh, falling back through the hole or having issues when it comes time to remove it. They're very easy and they're universal in the sense that you can use them for wall frames, you can use it for screws, you can use it for anything that you really need to mount to a wall and they also come up to 20 kilos per plug. So that means 20 kilos, which what, what, what did I say, 22 pounds. So the more plugs you have, the more weight you can put on the wall. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching Bill's Out To.